Hi everyone, JP here at Websites for Beginners and you can see I've got a very nice colorful and flashy screen and this is what I want to talk to you in this video about is Coolors, C-O-O-L-O-R-S, Coolers, Coolers, very cool website, pardon the pun. And this is not about website making per se, which it in the end kind of involves, but it's an important part of when you are designing for a website and that is your color theme or your color palette. Now setting up a color palette isn't the easiest thing in the world. If you are working with a client or a company who does have one already, it's very easy. They give it to you, they tell you stick to these corporate identity rules, don't move from them and that's very easy. But sometimes when you're working with a website, you need to come up with those ideas for the colors you want to stick with it and Coolers is going to help you a lot with it. You go to the link in the description below and then click here on Start the Generator and I'm going to show you hands on how Coolers work. There is much more to this than what I'm going to show you in the first few minutes. So hang on tight. If you've seen this kind of thing before, I'll show you a few tricks that Coolers has up its sleeve. I'll just close this pop up here. So this is where you get this palette of five colors and you can generate palettes. So the first thing you do on your keyboard, you press the space bar. And as you press the space bar, you get new color palettes. Now, what's important to understand about a color palette is that these colors are selected based on rules. For example, imagine a coffee shop for this one. Very good. You can imagine the orange, hmm, that will look good with a coffee, right? Coffee mug that is orange. And then these colors, excellent theme for a coffee shop. So there are certain rules that Cooler supply to give you a palette with five colors that you can use to design out your website and you can use these colors or not. But what you do, and this is where Cooler's becomes very interesting is as you go through it and let's say, I, I'm no, not here, not here yet. No green, no blue, blue, no. Let's say we get here and you say, aha, I like these two colors, but I'm not in the mood for this green. Now what you do is you lock these two colors down here. You see the little lock, click on it and lock them. Now coolers will still continue as you press spacebar to come up with other color suggestions for you that will complement these two. And you go through it and then you say, okay, I like this one over here. Copy this uh, or lock it, not copy, lock it. But this blue, no. Oh, mm, no, those two, no. And then when you get him, I like this darker one. Let's lock this one. And then last one. Okay. And the moment he gave me that one, I love it. And I'll tell you now what you always have to look out for when you are making a color palette. You have to look for a dark color. You have to look for a light color. That's the first rule I want to give you. Many times you're just going to use black and white, but it's a good idea to look for those colors that also can give you that darkness and that lightness. Make sure you've got a minimum of one of each in your color palette when you're starting out. It will help you to build up great sites. The dark will be for text on white backgrounds or light backgrounds, and the light will be for text or icons on dark backgrounds. The other cool tool here is, for example, let's say I unlock this one and I press again and it gives me this dark one. So I like the orange, but instead of using the orange, I actually want to use a shade of the orange, a darker shade or a lighter shade. You go to this icon here that says view shades, click on it and look at this and you will see that shade is here with its number. And remember I told you get a lighter one. So I'll go up here and I click on this one. Ah, oh, look how well that works together. So this is how you can even change between the shades. How to use this on a website is all about this code that you see here at the bottom, which is called in long terms, hexadecimal code. To use this on your website, you will have to use these codes. And these codes, the hex codes, are the names of this color. Yes, this color actually has a name and it's that code there at the bottom and you know probably already how to use it. But if you don't, every website builder, page builder, when you are working with colors, you can bring in this hex code. So what you do is, let's say you go to this one here, you simply click here on copy H-E-X, hex, and then you paste it. But there's so much more with coolers. You can go up here to export and then you click on export. And the one that you can do is, uh, let's, which one did I use? Copy URL. 
Well, copy URL is a good idea. If you click on copy URL and you open a new browser, you can just save the URL and control V to paste that. You can see all those hex codes up here in the URL. So it will remember for it. So instead of having to copy each one of these individually, you just go and copy the URL. You can also export it. And I previously did as a SVG. So it downloaded the SVG here. If I click and it opens, it looks like this. And again, it will give you the URL here at the bottom so that you can link it and go and see exactly how it works on coolers. And the other export, I just copied the URL and I pasted it in a Word document. So this is just the beginning. Okay, so this is how you can build up a color palette. The other way that I like to do is to bring in an image. And before we look at the image, as I hover over here, I forgot to show you, you can add more color. So if you need to add more, you simply click on the plus between these two. And what it's going to give you is a gradient halfway between this, halfway between this and these two. And then, of course, if you want to keep those gradients, no problem. But if you want another color, you simply go ahead and press space bar. Oh, I like this one a little too bright for my scheme, though. This one, maybe. And you go through it. This one I'm going to keep. But let's say I think, nah, too many colors. Then I go here, remove color. Now I'm back to six. Good. I deviated a little bit. So this is your color palette that you can build up. Remember the tip of getting a dark and getting a light. Let's talk about a case where you have a certain group of photos. They're all more or less the same. And I'm thinking again, like a bakery, like a coffee shop, like a flower shop. Then often you can draw your color palette from that. When you go up here, you will see under more, there is pick palette from photo. Now, many, many apps online and on your phone can do this. I think Adobe should take the credit for this, starting with it with Adobe Capture. Awesome app. I use it all the time, so it doesn't mean that Coolers is my go-to. I use a number of apps for this. But Coolers has just become my idea generator lately. So what I'm going to do now is browse an image, click here, and I'm going to bring in, let's say, this one over here. And it's going to analyze the image for me and then provide me with a color palette based on that image that I'm uploading here. There we go. Let me just put this a little bit in the middle. Let's make the screen a little bit bigger so you can see better. Good. So we can see here, this is the photo for this block site that she is developing. And the color scheme, as you can see in this kitchen, is very consistent. It's almost like I also walk with a color palette and set up this kitchen here as well. And this is what they give you. And you can see up here is the indicator for this color here. If I click on it, it moves around. So it goes around based on those rules and try to give you a color palette. Again, you can reduce the amount of swatches and the swatches is a color or you can increase it to as many as you want. Let's go back to five. And don't leave yet because I'm going to show you gradients in a short while, which is a very important tool as well. Go up here to pick palettes, and if you want to change the palette, you just drag this slider, and it's going to give you different variants based on this photo. So you are not limited, and I always, I'm a sucker for orange. I don't know why. And what did I want to say? You can always go through these. You are not stuck with the first color palette it gives you, and that's it. This is how you can easily build it out. And then you have the export button here, Open in the generator. No ways. Yes, ways. You open it in the generator, and then we are back here. So now you can fine tune it again. For example, let's say I want something lighter. Then I'll go to this little one over here, click on Views, Shades, and I'm going to put it there. I need it lighter. Darker, let's say I choose this one, and I'm going to increase it quite an amount up to here. Yep, I'm happy with this. This is more or less how I do the thing. And then I can even say that, ah, well, I don't like this color. Let's lock all of them. And then this one over here, let's cycle. Ooh, the blue is a nice accent color. Hmm, that caught me off guard. Ooh, I like this one as well. I think this one is too dark, but still. And this is how you go through it. We've done this. Well, black looks pretty good with this one, wouldn't you say? This is triple zero, triple zero, which is, and they gave it a name, Rich Black. Now, one of the things that you also do when you are creating a color palette is to work with gradients. And 
you know what is a gradient. So let's go over here to more, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm going to click on explore gradients first to show you exactly what is a gradient. Now this pink and blue, these are, I would say, one of the most used gradients online. I see it on YouTube thumbnails. I see it on websites. This is a very popular gradient and this one here as well. A gradient, and this is what I want you to understand how, to, how you can use a gradient to your benefit in designing a color theme. You have this blue here, there is the hex code for it, and on this side you have the pink. But what you don't realize is that you have a number of other colors between these two. These aren't just pink and blue. In the middle they actually mix and it gives you a light purple. And this is again where Coolers has a nice trick up its sleeve. Go to more, make a gradient palette. And it's going to give you more or less the same thing we looked at now. But what you're going to do in this instance, you're going to have your color on the left, one color, which is this pink, and you have another color on the right. Let me just see. On, they've got some others here as well. And now they cut that gradient for you into color swatches, specific color swatches that you can use. So just to have a look again down here, if you look at this is probably the gradient that we'd seen just earlier. Look at this one in the middle. Now that you view it in isolation and not part of the gradient, you can clearly see it's a different color. Same as this one. And then again, you can just go to view palette or open in generator. Ooh, okay, here's the view palette. Let's click here again on open in the generator. And it takes us again to that generator. With just these two colors, you have these three colors that you can use now on your site. The final tip I want to give you is actually something that Coolers has done on this page, which I recommend you also do. Look at the names, the hex names of these colors. What's the difference between these three and these two? And that is that for these three, they are written in black, and for these two, they are written in white. And the reason that is done is to allow for better contrast. You need to be able to read what's going on in that color. And sometimes it's a dark color, like black, that's better. Other times it's a white color. And sometimes it falls in the middle. For example, really this one in the middle, I think white will also still look good on it. And that's another one that Coolers has. It's called Contrast Checker. And if you go to the Contrast Checker, you can play around a little bit with it, but don't get too lost in it. But what you have here is that you have your background color and then you have a text color. And then it will tell you the contrast and the higher you can go, getting to, I think, 10, the better the contrast. Let me show you. What is the best contrast is black and white, right? So let's say the background color, let's make it white. I click here and I drag it to white. Ooh, okay, it can go higher than 10. And then let's make the text color black. 21, 21, Ooh, okay, super, five star. And it works both for small and large text. That's also very interesting. Like I said, this isn't everything, it's just a guide. You don't have to follow it slavishly because sometimes it's also the font, the look of the font, many other things that will determine. But this is a good indicator if you have no idea about colors, that which color, is it a white or is it a darker color that you will have to use for the text. So if I go here and I choose maybe this one here and I choose the background color, let's put it here on yellow and I put it there, you get a poor score. It's not bad actually, but it does tell you no. Oh, and you see how it improves by making it lighter. And as I make it brighter, it goes better and then it goes down. Very interesting. So it's just a little tool that can help you shape how you think about colors. For me, I've, I'm, I'm loving coolers lately because it's so easy to remember the website code. And then when I get here, I can start playing around with the generator. And there is actually much more here than you can do than what I've shown you at this moment. So this is a tool that can really help you set up your website and your color palette and your theme design for your website. Check out Coolers. Follow the link in the description below. Have a great day. See you in the next video.